we're on stop two of the caravan. It's just awesome to uh, be out and, uh, and and really, you know, getting to, to know, particularly for James and I, uh, who are, you know, we're heading into year four, uh, but that's, uh, you know, that's still a short timer at Penn State, right? Uh, we're, we're, uh, I'm thrilled to be with uh, two of our coaches who are both Penn State grads in uh, Denise St. Pierre and, and Randy Jepson. Uh, but it's just, it's just awesome to, to be together with, uh, with some of our colleagues. There's lots of uh, interaction that goes on there that's tremendous. But also, uh, you know, after having had a, a very good year uh, with the bell cow kind of being uh, the, the Big Ten Championship in, in football but, uh, and the Rose Bowl, but uh, we've, had, we've had a good year. Uh, from a, from an athletics overall athletic department standpoint, uh, for those of you that'll that'll stay and, and hear the, the the caravan presentation, um, you know I think there's there a lot of highlights and a lot of things to be really pleased about and proud about. But I think what I am so uh, enthusiastic about is I think we can be so much better uh, across the board, whether it be academically, whether it be athletically. I think it's 20. It looks like we're projecting 22 of our 31 programs will. Uh, we'll go to NCAA postseason play or, or a bowl game, uh, and and that means nine of our programs did. Uh, and so, so obviously our goal with those nine is uh, to get them into postseason play. And the ones that got in, uh, you know, other than uh, uh, the Kale Sanderson in a national championship, um, nobody else this year, you know, hoisted that trophy. Uh, we hosted some other trophies that you'll that you'll see, but n nobody else hoisted that trophy. So uh, improvement uh, to be made, and uh, I'm really excited about the things that we can do from a support standpoint to help that. Really excited about um, about our coaching staff. Uh, you've heard me say it before. Uh, I think we've got across the board uh, the, the best coaching staff in America. We added to it last uh, Thursday or Friday, whatever day it was, uh, with the naming of Sarah Brown as our women's head women's gymnastics coach, and we're working on a new uh, head women's ice hockey coach. So exciting times for us. Sandy James, I alluded to this a little bit about uh, facilities and things like that. In your mind, what delineates between a necessary upgrade for in football in the last building or whatever and something that might be cosmetic or recruit-based? Yeah, really, that's a really good question. And, and I think there are kind of two essential pieces. Uh, you know, from a facility standpoint, and I'm not just going to talk football here, although it certainly applies to, to football. Um, you first look at conditions for training, conditioning, competing, teaching and learning. You know, what are, what are the essentials around that? Uh, and I think that we've, uh, we've, got, we've got some room to improve there in a lot of places. Prime example, and that's why they're on that first five list, natatorium and tennis facility. I mean, just deficient, just deficient right now. The other piece for me would be, and this is where I think that Penn State's always had really good space. Um, uh, I've heard, I think I've heard James refer to it as the bones of, uh, of our facilities. Uh, but we haven't utilized them to tell our story. Some might call it branding, okay? I don't necessarily think that's bells and whistles, but it's it's taking the proper advantage of the opportunities to tell our story. And the Lash Locker Room, I think, is a great example of that. There's nothing over the top bells and whistles fancy about that locker room. It's really nice, absolutely, but every element of that locker room helps tell our story. It's, it's designed to be part of telling the story of our history, tradition, and success. The blue line, the black carpet, as we wear black shoes, no names on the lockers, the names are on the inside. All, all of those elements. So I think first and foremost, the space needs to be conducive to training, competing, conditioning, educating, and learning. And then secondly, Let's make sure we take advantage of the opportunity to tell our story. We've got a great story. Coach Franklin just mentioned that he comes to you with information, it seems like, a lot. I don't, I don't know if all head college football coaches are like that, where they go to the AD and say, hey, I read on the internet this, this, but what are those meetings like, and what is it like having a coach like that who's probably coming to you and saying, hey, Alabama's doing this, or Ohio State's doing this? 
Yeah, it, it, I mean, first of all, there, there are a couple of different ways that, that he does that. I mean, obviously, electronically, an email, uh, I don't even know what the term is for sharing a tweet, uh, you know, privately, that kind of thing. But I appreciate it uh, because, you know, you, it is important to understand what your competition is doing. And his point about the Big Ten versus the, the rest of the country is, is a good one, too. I think it's most important that we make sure we understand where we are within the conference. Uh, but it's also important to know we're looking to be national champions, national champions in football, national champions in, in every one of our sports, because that's the goal. Uh, that, all right, what's Clemson doing? What's Alabama doing? Doesn't mean we're going to do it, because as he said, doesn't mean it's right for us. But there's an awareness of, okay, here's what they're doing. Do we have to combat it from a competitive standpoint? Do we need to combat it from a recruiting standpoint? And if so, is it do what they're doing, or is it do something else from a counteractive uh, standpoint? We also, uh, I don't think we necessarily meet formally a lot, but we interact a lot. He and I went to Phoenix last week for our, for our Big Ten meetings. You know, we spent four and a half hours each way um, just talking, and it was awesome. Um, I just did a bunch of budget figures around the country, and you know, with the latest this doesn't even take into account the television outlays for the, the individual leagues, especially the SEC and the Big Ten. But it occurred to me that maybe we will never see a peak in the revenue flow into big athletic departments like we are now because of the cable paradigm kind of crumbling and there's not any concrete ideas on how to monetize the different platforms and we could be in for a la carte and God knows what. Is that your opinion can it go any higher as far as the revenue it's it's skyrocketed so much just in the last 20 years yeah I think there are two options um, one is that it kind of plateaus and and either it stays stable or we have some incremental annual growth or yeah. it, it, it goes it goes back down I don't I think you're right I think this is what you're saying there's there's not another big push up there with what we currently view as traditional cable or traditional TV media rights. There might be something else out there yeah. that we're not thinking about yet that hasn't been invented, that hasn't been whatever. But I, I think it's either that or that. I actually think it's just going to flatten off. I don't think it's going to go down. If you think about um, the, uh, the value of live sports television, it is really the only Thing left and think about the space that college occupies in that. So I think that although there will be some losses, whether it's our friends at, at ESPN or, but I, I don't think that's going to have a huge impact on, but that's my guess. But it's also my job to protect against the other. Yeah, and I suppose you're doing that. I'm not going to ask you for an answer on that, but why do you feel that way? You're just, you just have a faith in the demand of the product, basically, right? And then it will be able to be monetized Correct. It's not, it's, yeah, it's not just a faith. I mean, I, I believe because live sports television is the only remaining um, you know, demand from both an advertising standpoint and, uh, and a subscriber standpoint, Clearly, understanding the subscriber environment is go is going to change. Um, that I think that, that that the demand will continue to prop that up. Is there an element of, of trying to maximize um, maybe the, the springboard off of last year uh, for football in terms of basically on Facebook? I get a, an ad to buy season tickets every time I open Facebook. Um, <laughs> right, dark <laughs> right? <laughs> Did you what? buy your season tickets yet? <laughs> I, you know what? I get to go anyway. But, uh, uh, I can change that. <laughs> <laughs> if, if the press box get it, gets any worse, maybe we'll just sit out there and <laughs> stay at home. Yeah, but what, what, what's the urgency there uh, in terms of maximizing the season tickets that you, that you sell or whatever other revenue generation you can do off of that? Yeah, so, so first of all, no matter what you, who, who you are, what, what your endeavor is, you want to seize them all, right? I, I wouldn't be doing my job if, if we didn't do that. But secondly, let's remember that whether it's selling a ticket or um, uh, cultivating a donation or a corporate sponsorship 
or a t-shirt, whatever, whatever it is, to create revenue, it's about taking that and putting it back into 800 student athletes and 31 programs. Uh, and you guys talk to James about whether it's the facilities question or it's about you know Michigan going to Rome or whatever it is, this endeavor is getting more and more resource intense uh, uh, to, uh, to keep up. Penn State doesn't have to do what everybody else does. I believe that with every fiber of my soul. We've got an incredible university with an incredible tradition of success that means something. Um, but like I when I talk about facilities, we don't have to lead the race or win the arms race, but we gotta run the race. We gotta be in it. And we can't, and we can't be so far behind that it's, uh, that it's a, a, a huge disadvantage to us. Uh, so we, it's my job, one part of my job, to take advantage of every opportunity we have to create resources to put into, into the experience of our student athletes. And, and you can count on us to do that, whether it's, whether it's making sure that we're doing everything we can to sell tickets, or it's having a concert in Beaver Stadium, or you name it. So, so the follow-up is how do you feel like that's going? I mean, how is that? Is it, are, are they meeting the benchmarks that you're doing? Uh, you know, I, th I think it's, um, it's going well. You know, the, the response from an excitement standpoint around the success we had last year with football, I think has gone has gone well. Um, some of the things that we want to do from a football game day experience, ticket sales, premium seating, can't be done until, until we renovate. Uh, some of the things like the uh, Happy Valley Jam and Blake Shelton, the NHL preseason game, uh, you know, sometimes first time out of the shoot, doesn't go as well as you want to, you make some adjustments, or you decide, you know what, that doesn't work. It's the old fail fast, right? Try something, doesn't work, boom. Um, you know, what was it, Denise today said something about uh, 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 Edison and the light bulb, and you know, 20,000 20, failures. Um, but those were, that was 20,000 times that you figured out, okay, that won't work, so that's getting me closer to the solution that will. That, that's my attitude. I, I don't. I am not um, arrogant enough, or, or whatever the word is you want to use, to think that everything we do is going to be a huge success. Some of it is trying, figuring out it doesn't work, and move on.